Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Prospect Charter School's Algebra 1 course. Today we are going to go over section 5.9, slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. This is a really awesome and super fun one. Because we get to look at slopes, we get to do comparisons, and we get to look at what is the difference between parallel and perpendicular. And why Mr. O'Neill really, really, really hates the word opposite for math. So let's start with what are parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines with the same slope. Actually, I shouldn't say that. That's kind of bad. That's kind of like giving everything away. I gave everything away. Oh well, let's see if you guys followed, uh, paid attention there. Lines that never touch. Lines that never intersect. And of course we're going to be talking about lines in the Cartesian coordinate system, which is only two dimensions. So if I have two lines that never touch, we're going to look at their slopes. Let's look at the first slope. Let's say that we have this line over here in green. And look at that beautiful green line. And then another line over here in red. Look at that beautiful red line. And I have to ask the question. Are these two lines parallel? And the answer to that question is yes, these are two lines in the same plane that never intersect. So what about this blue line right here? Okay, so green and red are parallel. What about blue? Is blue parallel to green? Well, that answer would be yes. And is blue parallel to red? Yes, so we have three parallel lines. Now what happens if I take purple and put it right here? Are purple and blue parallel lines? The answer would be no. They're the same line. They're two lines that share every single point. That means that they're the exact same line. So in this case, purple and blue are not parallel. They're the same. So keep that in mind. Purple and blue, because they are the same line, are not parallel. The same line cannot be parallel to itself. It's kind of silly. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at their slopes. The slope of the green line is, well, we rise one, run one, rise one, run one, rise one, run one. So, slope of green is one. For red, we drop one, retreat one, drop one, retreat one, drop one, retreat one. So, the slope of the red one is also one. And the slope of uh, blue purple? Well, it rises one, runs one, or drops one and retreats one. So its slope is also one. So I think that proves what I said very, very early in this video. Lines that are parallel have the same slope. So if two lines are parallel, what can we say about their slopes? They're the same. So this helps us to determine when two lines are parallel just by their equation. 
So let's look at an a, a set of e set of lines and their equations and see if they're parallel. Let's say that we have y is equal to 2x minus 4 and y is equal to 2x plus 5. Are these two lines the same? The answer to that question is no, Mr. O'Neill. This one has negative 4 and this one has positive 5. So obviously they cannot be the same. And you're like, yep, you're right. Now the question becomes, do they have the same slope? Well, the slope of the left one, 2. Slope of the right one, 2. So they do have the same slope, and they are not the same line. Therefore, the lines are parallel. The lines are parallel. Now, I don't like writing parallel over and over and over again, so I'll let you know that the symbol for parallel looks like that. I know it looks like an 11. But we'll just remember that this is with lines. So if you see two lines and they're right next to each other, that means parallel. So let's move on to the next one. What about perpendicular? What does perpendicular mean? Well, perpendicular means that we have two lines that intersect at a right angle. Perpendicular. Perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect at a right angle. What are two lines on every Cartesian co coordinate system that intersect at a right angle? I'll tell you something, they're really special. And I'm not talking about short bus kind of special. I mean, they're like actually like really important and like they define the Cartesian coordinate system. I'm talking about the X axis and the Y axis. The X axis and the Y axis always intersect at a right angle, which means that X is always perpendicular to Y. Now, what about two other lines? Let's say that we have this line here, which would be um, y equals 2, and the undefined line of x is equal to 1, which would be a vertical line right here. These also intersect at a right angle. Now, let's look at the slopes of the two lines. And by look at the slopes, I'm going to talk about the rise over run portion of them, not necessarily what the slopes become when you simplify them. For the slope y is equal to 2, you'll note that there's no x. So how can we find the slope? Well, that's because we don't write 0 in math most of the time, because we, we know it's there and you can always add 0. So really, this is 2 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. And you can do that for an infinite number of times. Don't want to do that. As I said, mathematicians don't want to work too hard. So what this really is, y is equal to 0x plus 2. And 0, of course, can be turned into 0 over 1. This would be a 0 slope equation. Our slope is 0 over 1. Now what about the other equation? x is equal to 1. Well, when we're looking at x is equal to 1, well, first we can move the 1 over, and we get um, x minus 1 is equal to 0. And that 0 is actually uh, 0y. So I would probably have to divide by 0 to get y by itself, right? So when I do that, I'd have 1 over 0 x minus 1 over 0, which we're just going to pretend doesn't exist, is equal to, well, this would be indeterminate form, which again is another rule that we're breaking, but we're going to call it 1, right? Okay, we're going to pretend zero, 0, 0 divided by 0 for now is 1. So we have 1 divided by 0. This is called undefined slope. But notice the relationship between the two slopes. One of them is 0 over 1. One of them is 1 over 0. 
it looks like they did something interesting. What did they do? They flipped. So one aspect of perpendicular lines is that these slopes are, uh, let's, let's do this a little more formally, slopes of perpendicular lines are reciprocals. of each other. This is something that will always be true. And we've got beautiful evidence right here with the two easiest to understand, easiest to graph lines that are perpendicular, the x-axis and the y-axis. And we, we added a few things to it, but you know, there's still the x-axis and the y-axis, just shifted over a little bit. Now let's say that this is always true, and that's the only part of perpendicular lines that is always true. That if they're reciprocals of each other, bam, we're done. So let's look at two equations. Let's look at y is equal to um, 3x and y is equal to 1 third x. Now, looking at the slopes, we notice that they are reciprocals of each other, so obviously they have to be perpendicular, right? Well, let's look. Let's see what happens. So here's my, my new axes, and I'm going to graph 3x in blue. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. And I think that's it. So then we connect the dots, blah, 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 blah. And boom, we have y is equal to 3x. Now let's look at y is equal to 1 third x. Okay, well, we start here, and we go 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, and there's my other line. Now, looking at that, does this look like a 90 degree angle to you? Well, considering that the, the black portion of it is absolutely a 90 degree portion and that the blue and red are contained within that section, obviously this is not a 90 degree angle. That means that these are not perpendicular. So uh, what? What does it take to be perpendicular? It can't just be that they have to be reciprocals of each other. Well, let's look at another example of two lines that are perpendicular. Let's look at the two lines, y is equal to x and y is equal to negative x. Now, this should be an easy one to graph. So there's my x-axis. I'm going to do positive x in blue. And then I'm going to do negative x in red again. So here's my blue line. And here's my red line. Which you really shouldn't do in your car very often. It's bad for your car to get red lined all the time. You can break it and then you'll be sad because you won't have a car anymore. Now, looking at the blue and the red line, what do we have? That's right. We have a right angle. These two lines are perpendicular to each other. But, Mr. O'Neill, they're not reciprocals. Well, that is sort of true. Let's look at the graph. This is 1 over 1, right? And this is 1 over 1. So, flip them. What do we get? Yeah. 1 over 1. So... They're still reciprocals, but they're also negative reciprocals. This one is a positive slope. This one is a negative slope, which creates for a situation where you have two that are negative reciprocals of each other. 
So for the perpendicular line, you can't just say, oh, the slopes are opposite. Ugh, I hate that word. The slopes are not opposites. For perpendicular lines, they are the negative reciprocals of each other. So let's write that down. For perpendicular, and by the way, perpendicular is really hard for me to spell, so I'm going to start spelling it like this. Yeah, it's an upside down T, get over it. Perpendicular lines are lines that have slopes that are the negative reciprocal of each other. Perpendicular lines are lines that have slopes that are the negative reciprocal of each other. So for an example, y is equal to 2 thirds x would have a perpendicular line, y is equal to negative 3 halves. You flip and negate. Flip and negate. Flip and negate. If you can flip and negate the slope of one of them and it becomes the other one's slope, then they become perpendicular. And it works every time. There's also another word that I sometimes use for perpendicular called orthogonal. I just find orthogonal to be a little bit easier to use for me. Um, that's because I have spelling problems and perpendicular is one that I have a hard time spelling. Um, I usually want to put letters in there that shouldn't be in there. And sometimes that makes bad words and I don't like that. So a lot of the time orthogonal is the same thing as perpendicular. Yes, I use the upside down T, get over it. Okay, so now that you know that, the next time you hear me say, well, these things are orthogonal to each other, you will know it, it just means that they're perpendicular. Also, why I hate, really hate opposite is because people want to say that these are the opposite slopes of each other. They're not the opposite slopes of each other. They're the negative reciprocal of each other. It's like, what's the opposite of four? Negative four. No, one fourth. What's the opposite of four? Neg uh, one fourth. No, negative four. You know, opposite, bad. Bad word for using in math for the most part. There are occasions where it actually makes sense, but I try to avoid it, like some people try to avoid the plague. Or worse, Ebola. All right, so here we go. Tonight's do it before you go. So here is your before you went. Yep, I'm using even making bad grammar here. <laughs> All right, so the before you went um, is going to be section 5.9. And we're gonna be looking at hashtags, math is awesome, one through seven, odd. And then nine, 11, 15, 17, 23, 25, 27, 37, 45, and 47. So there you go. Lots to do. Plenty of time to do it in. Good luck and have fun.